Hello world, welcome to LTS, my name is Steve. Today we'll be discussing the relevance of the cross. But before I begin, I ask that if you like this video and channel to please not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So all that being said, here we go. I got the idea for this video for the now infamous Easter Sunday service held this year by the popular megachurch Transformation Church, a service that was led by its lead pastor, Michael Todd. If you don't know, Michael Todd is a pastor who in recent years has caught the attention of many in the Christian community, primarily due to his charismatic and yet different style of preaching. Changing something and you don't see it clearly yet. But you hit. <laughs> and now you're going to ask me to sell it back and ride in the hoop day again? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. And do you, do you hear and see the responses of the people? What, what, what I'm telling you is how you just reacted is how the people in your life will react. When God is doing what it takes for the miracle, what are you saying? This man was blind and what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. That's gross. So as one would expect, this year's Easter service wasn't your typical type of service, but many in the Christian community were outraged due to how this service seemed to abandon the tenets of the gospel so that it could mirror worldly entertainment and things like playing secular music from the popular artist Kesha and with scenes like this one. Step one, that you a baddie. Okay. He gotta have a fatty. Hey. <laughs> hey. Some, hey. Yeah. Look back, Patty. Uh-oh. What is she doing? Friends, I don't have a fatty. Girl, Girl we keep telling you it's okay. Your little booty matter too, friend. Oh, Y'all know they don't be discriminating. Don't ever do that again. And I honestly wasn't even going to talk about this service due to the fact that so many Christians had already covered this. But there was something that Michael Todd said in that service that I felt was worth discussing. Due to the fact that what he's about to say illustrates the problem with not just this service, but with how the gospel is being presented by some in the world today. 15. Um... I became the pastor and I didn't know what a pastor did. And so I was meeting with a group of people and they was like, what should we do for Easter? I was like, I've never preached the Easter message. So I'm not gonna start this year. We need to come up with an Easter play. And they was like, all right, let's do it. I said, but it can't be no whack, raggedy. I just, he got up. Like, it just cannot be that. Okay, y'all gonna act like I'm the only one that saw like, oh, yay. That was good. The first problem that we have here is that he admits that he didn't even know what a pastor did, which fundamentally makes him unqualified for the job. That's messed up. And I'm not talking about him having some fancy pastoral degree from a Christian college, because if we look to the Bible, the Christian leaders in the Bible didn't have degrees. They got a call from God to serve and then went out there and did, which demonstrates that all you really need Need to enter ministry is a call from God on your life, a willingness to continue to seek God, a knowledge of the Word of God, and a willingness to have people around you that will challenge you when you're wrong. And so I say all that because if he's honestly saying that he doesn't know what a pastor did, then that means there's a breakdown somewhere that he has to figure out before he can truly begin leading others in their walk with God. Maybe we go back to basics. But the biggest issue that I had is where he says, All right, let's do it. I said, but it can't be no whack, raggedy. I just, he got up. Like, it just cannot be that. 
You see, Jesus getting up is the most important moment in all of human history. And sure, we may have seen reenactments of the crucifixion countless of times in church services, movies, and TV shows, but that doesn't change the magnitude of what happened. I think the biggest problem is that in today's world, we all have that mindset that we have to be consistently entertained. What else you got? that it's easy to forget to just sometimes take a breath and take stock of what God did for us. I mean, he sent his son Jesus to die for us when he didn't have to, and then he did something that no one else has been able to do. And because of that sacrifice and resurrection, we all now have the opportunity to be in right standing with the almighty God. It's kind of a big deal. And I want to be known that I don't have some personal issue with Michael Todd. I mean, he's very passionate about what he does. But the problem with him and others like him is that they believe that the gospel needs to be sensationalized in order for it to be relevant to the world around us. But what they don't realize is that by doing this, that they're fundamentally saying that the gospel story isn't enough, which leaves the door open for the church to become more fixated on bringing in new church members as opposed to discipling followers of Christ. You see, Christians conforming and making the gospel attractive to the world was never the job that Jesus gave to his disciples. No, he commanded them to Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And the disciples did this because they knew that the gospel will always be relevant because Jesus getting up will always be the most incredible and life-changing moment in human history. And in today's world, just saying that may not be flashy or get you a lot of followers, but it will plant seeds that will hopefully one day bring that lost soul to the point where they realize their need for a savior. As Christians, that's all we're here to do, plant seeds and disciple. That's all there is to it. And so with all that being said, we come to the end of another video. I release a new video every month, so I'll see you then. And before I forget, I ask that if you like this video and channel, to please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And so until next time, I pray God's blessing on you and that you always seek him first. What else you got?